Real freedom isn't about just quitting stimulation. It's really about feeling again and feeling deeply. That's what No Numb November is really about. I'm Dr. Trish Lee, cognitive neuroscientist, and your guide this No Numb November. Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode two in um, our series, No Numb November. If you're on a NoFap journey, if you are um, giving up drinking or any substances that are legal, illegal, reducing ones that are prescribed, of course, with your doctor, this is the place for you because I don't want you to have to numb out anymore. We're going to take this idea one level deeper today into the hidden cost of dopamine abstinence. Every November, thousands of people vow to cut everything off. No screens, no sex, no stimulation. But by week three, their motivation crashes, their energy tanks, and they feel numb, anxious, and even hopeless. That's not failure. It's withdrawal. It's your nervous system reeling from, first of all, true connection and the disconnection from that mostly digital dopamine overload. So here's what we're talking about. If you are struggling already in week two of your No Numb November, this is your nervous system screaming at you. It needs help. It needs to rewire. So let's dive into the biology of dopamine deprivation. So if you've spent years training your brain for constant novelty, scrolling, gaming, explicit matter, your reward circuits adapt. That's what neuroplasticity is. I always say neuroplasticity can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending upon what you do with it. So if you train your brain and all those circuits in the reward system to expect stimulation and lots of it, that's what they depend on. So when you suddenly pull the plug, you are actually destabilizing the system, not stabilizing it. And it can even lead to a collapse. Neurons that once lit up with anticipation for all that stimulation now sit quiet. You're not lazy. Your brain's not broken. You're depleted. This is why pure abstinence usually backfires for people without a plan. So let me just tell you, I am a fan of complete abstinence, but you must have the system that works. You must rewire your brain as you're abstaining. That's how you synergize. You can't just remove the rush of dopamine without retraining the brain back to its healthy rhythm. Now, you know, I'm kind of like that guy from the hair club for men back in the day with the commercial where they showed a guy who was bald and then he had hair. He's part of, you know, not only is an owner, he's also a customer type of thing. Well, you know, this girl had to recover from decades, lifetime of overstimulation. Thankfully, now it's been almost 20 years, over 15 years, where, you know, I would overwork too many screens, even though they were at the beginning of their time, uh, constant output, you know, juggling my family, juggling work, trying to be a people pleaser to just about everybody. And I remember one morning just staring at my computer while I was trying to cut all of that off without a solid plan, and I felt nothing, no drive, no joy, just gray. And that's a flat line. So if you're in a flat line, I want you to know it's part of this process without rewiring. That's why I'm not a huge fan of No Fap November. And I realized it. And that's why this year we're not doing daily No Fap challenges. Instead, I am going to try to inspire you to understand a real rewire is absolutely necessary. So back in those days, my brain map showed that my prefrontal cortex was offline. 
the reward network in my brain was underactivated. I didn't need more discipline. I was being really disciplined in all of the things that were keeping me in that position. I needed regulation. I needed rhythm in my brain. And this is really how I got very much inspired to dive into this work using technology such as brain mapping, using what is now my one-on-one -on -one clinic to use that technology to help people regulate their brains. It started with me and then I did it with my kids. Then I did it with my husband who also offers this technology in a little different way in his office, Lee Brain and Spine. There he does regenerative medicine. He works with people with erectile dysfunction and SAD. He works with people with neurodegenerative disorders because the rewiring is what's necessary, not the discipline. Sometimes the discipline makes things worse. So let's talk about the myth of self-control. Culture teaches that discipline is deprivation, right? That when you're disciplined, you're trying to abstain. And I talk to people about this all the time. I tell them this isn't about abstinence. Once you regulate your brain, which is what neuroscience teaches, you don't have to abstain. That's the beauty of it. A regulated brain doesn't need, nor would it ever want, high levels of dopamine. I was just talking to someone over the weekend. Since no vice November last year, I really haven't been drinking. So I had a glass of wine and, you know, the person kept trying to get me to have more wine. And I'm like, no, nah, I really haven't been drinking that much. And the person said, why? Why would you ever just not just keep drinking? We're going to have a great night. Let's keep drinking. And I'm like, no, the, the reward is feeling good tomorrow and being able to get up and rock out my best life. I don't need lots of alcohol as the reward. So the same goes for you. When you're regulated, you would never want all that dopamine from the screen because you know it's going to make you feel terrible tomorrow. The reward is in your real life, not in the screen. That's why I call my master class a pleasure pathway reset. It's double entendre. You know how I love them. Meaning you have to set the pleasure pathways in your brain back towards healthy regulation of dopamine. You also have to set those pathways in your life. Back to your hobbies, your people, and your work. That's where dopamine is supposed to be linked, not explicit matter, not the screen. So your prefrontal cortex, it's the seat of self-control. It's kind of the CEO or the captain of the ship. It doesn't thrive when you completely suppress desire. It thrives when you redirect it, right? We don't want you to go on a dopamine detox. We want you to go on a digital dopamine detox, especially explicit matter. It's got to go 100%. But we want you to reset those pathways back into your life, train desire to get back to business for purpose and passion. So we don't want you just to completely resist. We want you to shift it. When you resist without retraining, stress circuits flare. You probably don't have to tell you that. And you enter the tension loop. Resist, stress, relapse, shame, repeat. That's exactly what happens with explicit matter. A person can't, you know, just resist for the whole rest of your life. You might even delete every single app but you still secretly or not so secretly still crave the same dopamine pattern. You still need those spikes of dopamine because the pathways, not the content, is what the brain misses. So this is how it works, that your brain wants to fire up those old re reward pathways back toward the screen at those super high levels of dopamine. We want your brain to shift back into your life at lower levels of dopamine that are balanced, the happiness trifecta. Dopamine at lower levels combined with serotonin combined with oxytocin. This is not a moral problem. When it comes to explicit matter, this is a mechanistic problem. It's a mechanism in your brain. It is a dopamine dependency that's being fed by habit loops. That's the real deal. A rewiring is absolutely necessary. Whether you can do it by yourself or not, that's the question. Stay here with me. Subscribe to this channel. Get the notifications. Show up. Listen.
do the brain hacks. Better yet, go over to drtrishley.com, check out the masterclass, Pleasure Pathway Reset, join it. That way you and I are now in a relationship, my friend, or actually we already are, but we're in a tighter relationship. This way we get to see each other once a month and I get to encourage you and you get to rewire your brain with the 134 lessons that I have very intentionally created just for you to help you out of this tension loop. So it reminds me of my precious daughter, Fiona. If you've ever heard me on podcasts, I have, as open as I will, talk about the situation that happened with her, where she was linked to her phone. She was putting out hypersexualized content. And honestly, you know, I'm not a helicopter mom, even though some people have accused me. I was served her content. And I don't even go on Instagram. This was years ago. But... You know, every little tiny ping of a thumbs up or an artificial fire would send her nervous system into a tailspin and she'd start putting out even more content. Even though I told her if she puts more content out, I will take her phone away. Every little ping was proof to her that she was seen and it was artificial proof that she was safe when it actually was indicating the polar opposite. That's what I like to call a delusion. It is a double delusion where your nervous system thinks it's going in the direction that it it wants to and it desires to, but it's actually going in the polar opposite. So I had to take her phone away. And when I did, she went first into a tailspin, then the emptiness set in. And it wasn't even because she missed her phone. It's because she was going through dopamine withdrawal. And I'm aware of that. So I was giving her time. And if you can hear, I guess, podcast on people's media all the time. I've talked about the story at length. But basically, I said to her, babe, get yourself together, which means regulate. Of course, I've shared the strategies with her, but I won't share that right now. I said, once you get yourself together, you can have your phone back five days later. She was never able to get herself together. It was such a dopamine dependency that she was literally tweaking for her phone. And I said, if you can't get yourself together, this was, we're approaching a week. I had given her a week. I said, if you can't get yourself together, I'm canceling the phone number. And, and I, I say it like it was easy. It was one of the most difficult weeks of my entire life. But I canceled her phone number to tell her, if you can't regulate your frontal lobe sweetness, I will do it for you. It was very dark days for our family. It was very difficult. But I can tell you, because of the way we are, we've all grown emotionally um, substantially from that experience. And she thanks me. She thanks me for having the strength to break that loop she was in when she didn't have the strength. And I will tell you, it took a lot of strength to do. And that's what I'm telling you. If you can't do this by yourself, this is a mechanism. That, that happened to her, not because she missed her phone, it's because her brain had forgotten how to get into that chill rhythm of regulation, of rest, of purpose without it. That's what dopamine abstinence can feel like to so many people when they try to quit explicit matter or digital overstimulation. Your system panics in the silence. And if you can't turn off the panic button, you need someone to help you. Uh, You can think of your brain like a treadmill stuck at speed 10. And if you jump off cold turkey, guess what happens? You face plant, right? To heal, you don't have to run harder. You have to slow the machine down, teaching your nervous system the pace of peace again. Now, this girl knows the difference. I know the difference of the feeling of being so ramped up and thinking it felt good to now being able to exist at just such lower levels and peace and calm and really enjoy it. That's what I want for you, my friend. C.S. Lewis said it like this. You can't get second things by putting them first. Pleasure isn't the enemy. It's the disorder in your nervous system. It's the dysfunction in your brain. When pleasure leads, peace dies. When peace leads, pleasure returns. Naturally, rightfully, and beautifully. It's such a wonderful thing, thing. And this is what I'm calling the sacred neuroscience of rewiring your brain. It's dopamine that's reordered under purpose. You are a divinely inspired being. It's imperative you get off the pleasure pain paradox loop 
and you get back to purpose and passion by rewiring your nervous system. So if you're in the middle of NoFap November and you're feeling flat or hopeless, please hear me. This is not a failure. This is feedback from your nervous system. It's asking for integration, not isolation. Freedom isn't found in cutting off dopamine. It's found in teaching your brain how to receive it through presence, through purpose, through connection. That's what true rewiring means. Okay, so I hope that this episode helps you to realize if you're struggling, it's time to get that plan back in place. Go over to drtrishley.com, read the page that says masterclass. Everything in my masterclass is outlined there. Those are the things you need to do. In the ideal world, you join my masterclass, then I can help you. If you can't, look through that outline and start implementing as many things as possible yourself because this is the deal right now. Rewiring your brain, and especially in my program, we use technology which makes it vastly easier plus measurable. We want you to you know, come out of strained brain of overthinking. We want you to come out of drained brain that causes ED and SAD. I can see it on the brain map. We want you back into healthy balance. So discipline without regulation is deprivation. But discipline with understanding becomes freedom. That's how you go from hijacked to super normal. Okay, as always, control your brain or it will control you. I'll see you for episode three next time.